always remember what city this is, what you seek, who you are. As you go down to the forum every day, think to yourself, I am a new man, I seek the consulship, this is Rome. Anyone who's ever taken an ancient history class knows Marcus Cicero. Anyone who's ever studied Latin probably hates him. <laughs> He's known for his large body of works, all marked with his signature quick wit and sharp tongue and incredibly difficult Latin. But what history often overlooks, however, is the fact that Marcus Cicero was a Noah's homo, which is Latin for a new or a strange man. And <clears throat> new men in Rome were men whose families hadn't reached the highest levels of political office. For the average Roman, this really didn't affect you. You could be successful in many fields, but if you had political ambitions, being an outsider, being a new man, proved to be a really difficult hurdle to overcome. Cicero did not have the political capital that comes with claiming a famous ancestor. He didn't have the large network of patrons and clients that his opponents' families had been cultivating in some cases for generations and centuries. And simply put, his name wasn't widely known throughout the Republic. Nevertheless, in 64 BCE, Cicero was elected to the consulship, the highest position in Rome, unanimously by the Roman tribes. <clears throat> he used his mastery of language, his power, the power of his speech, and his ability to reach and mold the support of the people to overcome his position as, a, as an outsider and earn his place in Roman society. Now I know, regardless of your political leanings, just the mention of an outsider candidate or an anti-establishment candidate will bring back recent memories. The 2016 presidential election was marked by the impact and success of these outsider candidates. On the Democratic side, Bernie Sanders started his movement and built a revolution from a simple, almost laughable grassroots message. In the Republican camp, Donald Trump, now President Trump, made huge waves with 140 character statements and he built and energized a large movement with his huge rallies. Both men were up against the political leaders of their parties, but each were able to reach success with the base by using a similar strategy to Cicero's. For classicists like myself, 2016 was the year that reminded us that we not only have inherited the ideals of democracy and a republic, but we've also inherited the political tactics and schemes that politicians like Cicero perfected over 2,000 years ago. Despite the fact that Cicero enjoyed, really relished in, talking about himself and writing about himself, he really did not leave behind a great description of his campaign strategy. The best source for this is actually a letter written to him by his younger brother, Quintus. The first piece of advice in this letter to his brother was actually the quote from the beginning of this talk. Always remember what city this is, what you seek, who you are. Every, every step taken as a candidate must be taken with a constant awareness of your position as an outsider. Every action done must be carefully calculated to counterbalance the stigma of your position. This makes it all the more difficult for Senator Sanders and um, now President Trump because of the sheer amount of exposure there is for modern political candidates especially in the age of social media, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Every action they take is instantly shared around the world. Every post they make on Facebook, every tweet they send out, regardless of time of day, is <clears throat> instantly viewed and scrutinized by more than just their followers. As an outsider, this means that a unified, mes unified message is not only necessary, but if you don't have a unified message, you better be very good at spinning bad publicity. Quintus told his brother not to leave Rome. His constant presence in the city would do more for him than a single speech could. Cicero knew from personal experience that as an outsider, the people need to see you to connect to you. And he learned this the hard way when he first ran for office. His first position in the Roman Republic was as a quaestor, the lowest rung of magistrate in Sicily. He ran, won the position, 
and left for office with the full support of the people, incredibly proud of himself. And when he returned, he expected a warm welcome. As he stepped back on the shores of Italy, the people, many of them, didn't even realize he'd been gone. He was so frustrated and his pride was hurt, so he hurried back to Rome and reconsolidated and reestablished himself in order to move forward politically. This is where social media makes a difference for modern political candidates. Live tweets, infographics, Instagram posts, Snapchat stories, they all make it seem as if the candidates are constantly present, even if they're only in a specific area or town. Donald Trump already had a well-established public image, especially on Twitter. When he made his announcement, he hit the ground running with his hashtag, Make America Great Again. Donald Trump used his Twitter account to dominate the news cycle for months before placing a single ad. It was a beautiful strategy, and it worked bigly. <laughs> Trump appeared to be everywhere at once. His Twitter feed was a knot of message lines, and <clears throat> controversial tweets were embedded and surrounded by constant updates from the field, policy statements, and uh, infographics and memes. <clears throat> and retweets. In this way, the fishbowl effect for outsiders was dazzled by his busy image, and any political enemies or even the media themselves would have to sift through his timeline and through all of these posts in order to piece together his policies and plans and report on him. Bernie Sanders, on the other hand, did not have a well-established public image. His biggest moment in the national spotlight before he ran for office, uh, for president, came in 2010 whenever he filibustered, in the <clears throat> filibustered against tax breaks for the wealthy for eight hours. His biggest grassroots support on social media came on Reddit. In the first six months of the campaign, there were over 80 Sanders-specific subreddits or discussion pages on the site. It was grassroots efforts like this on social media that helped spread his message and fueled his campaign throughout the primary. Reaching the people is only the first step, however. The second and most crucial step is invigorating and energizing the people that you're talking to. For a politician, this comes mainly from your oratory and rhetoric, which <clears throat> is something that Quintus really did not need to advise his brother on. Cicero's first entrance into the public eye came in the law courts. The Roman legal system set up a little different than the modern day. The cases were heard in the forum, and they were open to the public. Large crowds of people would come to hear the advocates, usually young men, but sometimes older, experienced senators would advocate in the courts. They would come to listen to their power of language and their, their mastery of oratory. It was almost a competition, almost a reality show. Cicero showed his, his political ambitions early on because he took on large, huge um, cases, high-profile cases. His first case that really caught the attention of everyone was the prosecution of a man named Varys. Varys had been the governor of Sicily, and he was being accused of a long list of crimes, including defiling temples, embezzling state funds, stealing private property. Cicero prepared several days worth of speeches against Berries, but he only needed one to win. After a long day of hearing witnesses, Cicero ended his speech with the worst accusation brought against Berries, namely killing a Roman citizen without a trial. <clears throat> the people that were surrounding him and listening to this speech were so roused and so angered by Cicero's description in very great detail of the execution of this Roman citizen that Varys, for fear of his own life, fled the forum and went into voluntary exile, essentially forfeiting his case and admitting guilt. Cicero was lifted up and carried out of the forum by the people. In one fell swoop, Cicero had not only secured his position as one of the best speakers in Rome at a very young age, but he had also earned his position as one of the great defenders of the people. Both Senator Sanders and President Trump are incredibly skilled at inciting emotion in their audiences. 
Bernie Sanders' message did not change from day one. His message resonated so well with his audiences that whenever he would recite his taglines or his statistics <clears throat> at both debates and in his rallies, his followers would chant them along with him. His refusal to use attack ads or go negative in many of his speeches meant that his rallies were issues-based, and any coverage of them or him would have to focus on those issues. Donald Trump, on the other hand, had a very different strategy. <clears throat> Donald Trump's speeches were almost improvised. They jumped from theme to topic almost without a moment's notice. His speeches are filled with unfinished thoughts and tangents, but that didn't matter. His supporters fed off of the atmosphere of the rally and the tone of the speech itself. Donald Trump is not the best orator, but he is incredibly skilled at not only inciting emotion, but molding that emotion in the crowds listening to him. His speeches were fueled by the restlessness, anxiety, and fear of the people listening, and he built off of that. He capitalized on it. He promised that when he got into office, he would change everything in Washington. He would drain the swamp and make America great again. There, by placing themselves against the established candidates, these, these candidates were able to reach voters who had previously not felt engaged by politicians. These voters felt and still feel as if they're outsiders watching their country with no say and no real ability to control what's going on. Just like Cicero, the, the power behind their success came from the supporters that they had energized. Now there's one more important parallel with Cicero that we're currently watching unfold, namely the way Cicero reacted to the results. When Cicero was elected consul, <clears throat> a senator named Catiline plotted against the Senate, the Republic, and Cicero himself. Cicero uncovered and discovered the plot and laid out all of the details to the people of Rome in a series of speeches, the result of which was Catiline was driven out of the city, the plot was foiled, and Cicero was seen as a hero. The, res the people in the Senate were so, so relieved by, and, and so relieved by the, the loss of danger and so <laughs> elated with Cicero's role in saving, the, saving Rome that they gave him the title Potter Patriae, which is Latin for father of the country. And this was an honorific that hadn't been given for over 300 years. Cicero, true to form, <clears throat> refused to let anyone forget that he was given the title Potter Patriae, and that he saved the Republic, and that he uncovered the plot, and that on his last day in office, the people lifted him up and carried him on their shoulders from the Forum to his home on the Palatine Hill, as if a general returning home in triumph. Cicero had to do this. As an outsider who had earned his place in society, he had to legitimize his position in history. He needed to focus on his legacy and remind people that he earned his place. He broke through as an outsider, even though it increased the animosity and brought retaliation from his political enemies. Donald Trump's reaction to the results have been interesting. For months after the election, Donald Trump was fixated on the numbers and the size of his victory. This trend's not going to stop. He has to do this. As an outsider, in the moment in which he won, the moment his opponent conceded, he had to immediately begin legitimizing himself and proving that he deserves to be there and fixating on his legacy. His Campaign promises may not come to fruition, but that's not what's going to matter to Donald Trump now. Donald Trump will be focused on his legacy and his overall position in American history. As annoying as he was in victory, Cicero was at his best <clears throat> when faced with defeat in dire circumstances. After the assassination of Julius Caesar, Cicero found himself to be one of the last living members of the Senate. His 
the people and his fellow senators were looking to him for his views on how to proceed. Everything had changed. Cicero took this newfound power and he used it. He attacked the supporters of Caesar. He railed against them in a series of speeches, particularly the, their leader, Mark Antony. The power of his words increased the animosity between Mark Antony and the Senate and the people, and actually later the future Emperor Augustus. The, this animosity increased so much that it actually stopped Antony from really passing any of any of his <clears throat> platforms or beliefs. The mastery of Cicero's language and his ability to reach the people, especially at this point in his life, brought him to a prominence that he hadn't reached since decades before. The day after the election, Senator Sanders saw a surge in support and people looking to him for his views. As the Initial shock of the results began to fade. The media and the Democratic Party began to realize that Bernie Sanders was still talking. And more importantly, his supporters were still listening and acting. Just as he did during the election, he accepted every invitation to take part in interviews and town halls. More people are hearing his message than ever before, and he's not stopping. His position as an outsider may have kept him from the mainstream of his party, but as in the case of Marcus Cicero and Donald Trump, this is a powerful position to be in. So what can we pull from this parallel? What can we learn from their example? <clears throat> in a time when our country is more divided than ever before, with no real hope of reuniting in the near future, what can we do? We're outsiders. What can we accomplish? But see, that's the trick. So were they. Marcus Cicero fought his way to prominence and earned his place in Rome despite his position as an outsider. Senator Bernie Sanders <clears throat> came out of near obscurity and brought life and vigorous debate to the political arena. Donald J. Trump defied every expectation and with his massive support base, earned his place at the head of the table if 2016 taught us anything, it's the fact that an outsider with a powerful voice and a resonating message is a powerful force to bear. We just need to remember Quintus Cicero's first piece of advice to his brother. Always remember what city this is, what you seek, who you are. As you leave this conference and you go out into your individual futures, I want you to remind yourselves, I am an outsider. I seek to make a difference. This is America. Thank you.